Hey everybody, Daniel Tate here with Energy Alabama. We got a, a new issue I want to break down, and, and this is Alabama Power's apparent highest in the nation solar tax is uh, headed to the to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. So it's going to the the federal level to to uh, adjudicate this challenge from advocates and some local homeowners here in the state of Alabama, really arguing that Alabama Power's tax on solar and the Public Service Commission's approval of it is unjust and discriminatory. So let me back up just a second and say, okay, what is the solar tax? I haven't heard of this before. Well, the solar tax is something that Alabama Power uh, was able to get through effectively in the dead of night. You know, notice and passing happened just mere weeks with no public input whatsoever back in 2013. And at the time, it was a $5 per kW per month tax for people who had solar and connected it to the grid. Uh, if you're saying, whoa, what the heck is a per kW per month? I don't understand all these terms. Just think about it in the most simplest of ways, that Alabama Power was effectively charging about 50% of people's expected savings from going solar in a tax every month. So if you expected to save 100 bucks a month by going solar, Alabama Power was effectively charging you about $50 uh, more or less every single month just for the privilege of having solar and connecting it to their grid. Uh, through this kind of challenge at the state level, Alabama Power actually proposed increasing it to $5.41, so they wanted a, a higher tax. Uh, kind of interesting considering that Alabama loves to think of ourselves as a low-tax state, but yet we have our, our largest corporation here in the state actually proposing higher and higher taxes. But nonetheless, the Alabama Public Service Commission approved it. And so what's actually happening at FERC is that advocates and some local homeowners are asking FERC and saying, Listen, this violates laws already on the books uh, from the late 70s. Back in the oil embargo days, we had some laws uh, at the federal level to help us uh, reduce our dependence on foreign oil, uh, increase our energy independence, energy conservation, local homegrown energy uh, to compete right, with utilities who were abusing their monopoly positions uh, back then. And sound familiar, they're still doing it today. So these laws have been on the book for quite some time. And advocates are asking FERC to take an enforcement action to say Alabama Public Service Commission is not acting in adherence to federal law, and we need the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission or FERC to step in and force them to actually meet the letter and spirit of the law here in the state of Alabama. So as I was kind of going through the filing that the advocates have, you know, a couple of things really popped out to me. Uh, one is that you know, Alabama Power, even at the state level, uh, before it got to the federal level, has admitted in its own filings that solar customers cost less to serve. What that means is that uh, it actually costs a lot less money. It makes sense if you think about it, right? If you have solar on your house, uh, you're not buying as much of the Alabama Power product more than likely. Um, so there's less of their product that they have to get to you. Which makes sense, you know. That's part of the reason why people want to do it. It helps to save money because you can do it cheaper on your own. Well, they knew that, and so as part of their process in trying to justify, they have to have something on paper. Uh, they just kind of called it their "quote unquote" informed judgment. Uh, they had to figure out a way to justify this massive tax. So what did they do? Well, it turns out they added something that they called lost revenue. In other words. What they said was, okay, if someone goes solar, that means they're buying less product from us. Well, they should have bought that product from us, so we're going to charge them for it. This is just absurd on its face, right? Like the whole point of you going solar, at least one of the whole points, is to try to reduce your utility bill and use less energy, use more you know, that you produce on your own property. I mean, to think about it, it's kind of like a corollary. If you had a tomato garden in your backyard, you don't start getting a bill from Publix and Walmart and Kroger for all the fewer tomatoes that you now purchase from the grocery store. But in effect, that's exactly what Alabama Power uh, has done through the solar tax. So again, uh, advocates are challenging this, saying that's just absurd. This violates federal law. Uh, and they're asking FERC to take that enforcement action, to come in and say, listen, uh, Alabama Public Service Commission, you can't do this and uh, a process by which to fix it. And then absent an enforcement action, so advocates are, are also asking, you know, hey, if FERC declines to take an enforcement action, uh, we actually want FERC to take a position to say we do or do not believe 
that the actions of Alabama Power and the Alabama Public Service Commission uh, violate federal law. And that will be helpful in the future, right, is that if FERC doesn't take action, the only other recourse is to go to federal court. And so knowing what the commissioners uh, at FERC uh, believe is happening in, in accordance with federal law will be very important for a future court challenge uh, if, if one actually ends up having to occur. So uh, that is Alabama Power Seller Tax. You probably heard a lot about over the last few months with this. We've been you know, really working hard. And I know there are a lot of folks here in the state, like I mentioned, GASP and the Southern Environmental Law Center, uh, working hard to get this done. Uh, but now it's at the federal level, and let's hope that our federal regulators will actually apply the law fairly.